going to be checking the bearing clearance. Here's a part number for the main bearings. Um, so we're going to do all this dry, and I'm going to show you the steps right now. So you're not going to use any lube. I've already loosened up the caps here. So I'm going to put the bearings in, and then I'm going to show you how to check it. When you press in the bearing, you want it to be seated in the center, left and right, and then these two edges here need to be flush with the top of the cap. On the block side, the grooves are on the side, unlike the cap side, the grooves in the middle. So, you only have four, four of each or five of each, so you can't really fuck that up. So you're going to do the same thing, make sure it's flush on both sides, and you're good. good. I'd like to thank Brian Crower for sending this crankshaft. So, uh, make sure you take everything you have when you buy it brand new even, and still go get it balanced. That way, you're guaranteed you'll get no crazy vibrations or anything like that. So, that thing's pretty sexy looking, I think so. All right, you're gonna set this in nice and slow. And from this point on, we're not gonna move this, okay? So this is plastic gauge. It comes looking like this. You're gonna cut a strip that's just a little smaller than the journal you're using. And you open this up. And that little piece you're going to put on the crank sideways. You're going to try to get it as side perfectly straight as you can. Like so. You're going to do this to every single one. And then you're going to put the caps on. So you can start anywhere on the middle one. So I'm going to start right here. Then you go across, then you go pivot at an angle this way, then you go kitty corner opposite, so away on the opposite one, then you go to the one opposite of that, and then kitty corner opposite again. Kitty corner opposite again, again, and you just do this until you run out of bolts. Now that you're all torqued down, you just break them loose in the opposite rotation that you used to tighten them. Break them loose, and then you're going to pull out all the uh, bolts. So as you can tell here, we're at 0 .0015 on the thickness range. Um, we're supposed to be between 0 .1, uh, 0 .0012 and 0 .0019. So we're dead center of that. Uh, and I have that pretty much all the way across except for number one. Looks a little bit closer to 0 .0016. So now I'm going to clean off the plastic gauge from the crank and from the caps. Then I'm going to install uh, the ARP studs into the block. And then we're going to go ahead and put assembly lube on the bearings, set down the crank, assembly lube on the caps, and then put the caps on. I'm installing these studs permanently, so I'm using some uh, Loctite. Uh, that's why I'm talking a little fast. I'm trying to get this done. So you're gonna have the there's shorter and longer studs since we're doing a uh, Girdle right here this uh, required the VTEC uh, studs So the middle three are long the outside two are short put the Loctite in 
hand tight all the way down. And then you need to have the crank in and have everything torqued prior to the Loctite setting up. For this build I'm using the Amsoil assembly lube. So er, make sure you cut this thing first, obviously it's not going to work. So put it on generously and then uh, we also have to put in the uh, thrust bearing too. And here's the part number for the thrust bearing. Now that you have the assembly lube on the bearings, you can use a little bit of assembly lube and it'll make the thrust bearing stick on. This is on number four. Then go ahead and put in the crank very carefully. You don't want to nick any of the journals. Then give it a nice little wiggle back and forth. Take your assembly lube again. And you're going to take your fingers, spread it across the journal. Just take a little bit now, since you already have some on the motor, and just put it on the bearing. And then place it in. Make sure, once again, the arrows are pointing to the front of the engine. And do that with every one of them. So go ahead, push down on these caps by hand. Get the cotter, get the uh, dowel pins in. Then we're gonna line this up. Right here, it's marked two. That's for number two and four over here. We're gonna probably need a rubber mallet to get these in now. So I'm going to have to take this back off later, probably tomorrow, once the Loctite um, sets up. But right now, I have to make sure the crank is torqued down to the correct spec um, before the Loctite dries. Then tomorrow I can just pull them off, do the rod clearances, and then torque everything back down. These ARP studs we got to torque down to 80. So I'm doing a four step version. I'm going to go 20, 40, 60, 80. Make sure the ARPs are 12 point. Don't be putting a six point socket on these shits. So here is a crank all torqued in. It should still move nicely. Feels like I got syrup. This assembly lube, so, lube is so thick, but should be able to do it nicely, you know, just with one hand or whatever. So, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, there's gonna be a whole bunch more coming up. Uh, doing piston rings, pistons, the whole motor. So I'm going to have a video for each little part, right? So share, subscribe, favorite, like, all that happy stuff. And uh, I'll see you next time. Wrench on.